Link 2012. Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. I'm going to be doing a very brief view of review of The Extra Dimension by Zungri, a very, very, very great map maker, uh, more so very well known for his data pack work, especially item builder. So I recently finished this map with Cooley. You can go ahead and check out the stream if you want to see our playthrough. Uh, however, this will just be basically a retrospective of the map as a whole, and then kind of going over each area individually. The map as a whole, I enjoyed quite a bit. Basically, the whole map revolves around these randomly generated dungeons, so it's very roguelike in a lot of its components, just kind of in terms of generation. Uh, obviously, you know, you can die, you can go through uh, multiple cycles, which is quite a bit of fun. The gameplay in it is pretty decent. There's some areas that are definitely much better than others. It's not like every area was a banger, but also it's not like every area was a letdown either. There's some really neat mechanics in this map as well, including the ability to upgrade armor to different tiers. So basically, you could take a leather piece of armor and upgrade it to an iron and a diamond. So if you got like a very special piece of gear with some interesting effect, you could upgrade it. That's honestly one of my favorite aspects of this map. I really, really enjoyed that. So very good work to you, Zungri. That was a very interesting mechanic. The loot in this map is a little bit starved. We did have trouble with two players, I felt, although towards the end we had quite a bit of stuff. So I feel like you probably could play it with up to four players. Although not all four players would be getting, you know, all the best gear in the world. You'd kind of be left with just mediocre stuff. Um, with that out of the way, I think we're going to go over each area individually. I would recommend this map, especially if you're someone that enjoys more technical maps. Um, there is a completionist mode in this map as well. Basically, there's a bunch of achievements you can get for each area. I won't spoil too much for them, but there's quite a few here. And this was really fun to complete. I, I do have mixed feelings on some of these achievements, though. While some of them are very fun and interesting, I really like the concept of it, some of them were not great, particularly the one with the flowers, because you have to get wither. It, that's miserable. It, it really is, because you have to kill wither skeletons, and you have to get the skulls, and they have to spawn wither, and you have to get the wither rose, and it's just nonsense. Also, the food one. Collecting every piece of food in the game is not great, especially when some of them are limited to exactly one area and you have to dig through the code to figure out where they're spawning um so those two i i really didn't like i would honestly remove the food one entirely the flower one i would just change to remove the wither rose uh, besides that the achievements were all pretty fun so this opening area was quite fun what i really liked about it was you went through and you basically and at this point we got spoilers by the way so if any of you haven't played the map yet and don't want to know too much about it um now's the time to turn off uh, what I really liked about this starting area is you went through and you kind of grabbed all this loot. You know, you got used to the whole random generation mechanic. And then once you finally got to where you get the monument item right down here, the hostile mobs you can spawn. And I think that is so, so cool. That's such a cool mechanic. Just kind of like a peaceful stroll through the park, gathering up some supplies. And then once you're pretty much ready to face difficulty, you get some mob spawn. So that, I felt, was really neat. But what's even cooler about this first area, by the way, I love this first area, it's so, so good, is that you come back here later on in the game. Because if you go look under here, there's a whole secret area beneath it. And that, that's baller, man. That's, that's, that's amazing. How you can go back to the previous area and kind of explore a whole new section to get some more awesome gear. So very, very good work with that, Zungri amazing first area. So if we go ahead and go through this portal, I'm just gonna keep forgetting I don't have my look down data pack installed. Um, so I guess we can fly right over. Man, I didn't see half. There's a lot of stuff we didn't explore. <laughs> so if we come right on over, trying to see where the, yeah, if we go in here, good. So we can come up here. After that first area gets to the monument, I always like my maps, you come out of this portal, I always like my maps when you get to the monument pretty early on. So that's thumbs up for me. Um, you get some nice little gear in your starting area over here, which is great. Um, the map was pretty plentiful with shulker boxes as well. I, I felt like there was a good balance in that regard. I never felt like I was low on shulkers. 
which is great. As well as I really liked how over the course of the map you provide bookshelves. So that 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 loot balance is pretty good as well. All right. Now for the resources, it was definitely interesting because there were some areas where you get like a little bit of resource and then you get a lot more of it in the subsequent area or areas. I feel like that's a pretty good way of doing things. Uh, so we go come into the first area here. This first area was a little bit difficult to make our way through entirely, and this definitely did give us a scope of how big these areas are because you can see this is the area one and this is massive this is a huge stronghold uh for area one here and we pretty much explored all of it um we pretty much explored a lot of most of these areas i guess we did miss out on this room right here but besides that like we fully explored this place uh, i liked how there were like little crevices here and there like you can see right here if you went and saw that you could come down here and explore this room over here um, so it's not like all the rooms are super duper obvious. Uh, the silverfish were annoying. The silverfish were pretty annoying. Uh, uh, mostly because you'd accidentally click a block and then you have to deal with silverfish. And silverfish, if you don't want to kill them, you end up getting a whole swarm of them. Uh, so I just don't like silverfish as a mob. I, I don't like them. They're a bad concept in my opinion. Uh, regardless, in this area you do get access to wood as well as stone and saplings if you need them so that's really great so great resource allocation there it is interesting with some of these areas because they'll spawn next to each other and so you can kind of break into the other ones which is kind of you know, a unique gimmick it's not positive or negative just a, a cool quirk cool cool little thing um don's gonna hate me for this but nice little easter egg <laughs> hope you're watching dom oh boy yeah, so this area was good. It was good. Uh, definitely um, a little bit of uh, treacherous to get through, but gave us a good idea of what to expect for the rest of the map. All right, moving on to the next area, the icy area over here. It was very perilous to fall here. That would be my main criticism is, and bear in mind, when I criticize maps like this, there's a lot of more positive stuff that I experience than the negative with maps that I enjoy, but it's just easier to make negative stuff sometimes. So bear that in mind. Take it with a grain of salt. Um, so I felt like this area might have been a bit too vertical. I wish it was a little bit more horizontally laid out. It is interesting mechanic that this is more vertical. Um, however, I just don't feel that it worked too well because it was difficult to get from place to place. Um, but maybe that's just my opinion. Regardless... I really enjoyed how there were spawners here that were like uh, octuple spawners. So there weren't too many spawners in this area outside of, I guess, these big towers right here. As well as there would be the occasional, yeah, like right here. There would be eight spawners right down here. And there would be a chest right up here at the top that you could get. You see we broke in right here. And that was pretty fun because you get like a nice little piece of loot as well as some spawners down here to deal with. One thing I will mention is that there is different music discs in each area. I kind of wish there was a bonus monument for music discs. Something to consider. Like bonus achievement, bonus objective. I kind of like the concept, but it turns out they were never used. Um, I guess in this area you also had the achievement of cats. That one was a little bit tricky because you had to go fish yourself, and fishing in Minecraft is pretty finicky. Um, so it was never guaranteed that you get the right stuff. But later on there was another quest where I had to tame a parrot, and I ended up using i think like 30 seeds on him and i was so upset because i didn't get it turns out i was just really unlucky <laughs> but uh yeah pretty decent area i really liked um clearing out the one thing i did like i did like clearing out towers i did like clearing out the october spawners clearing the area was fun traversing it not so much this area whoo this is a fun area so this one was full of tnt I say was because we lit up most of it. You can see there's a few sections that still have it here. But you could basically like these TNTs and they'll just explode and you could explore this whole place. It looks like there were some hidden um, chests here, which is kind of interesting. I guess we didn't find some of these rooms. We needed to explode a little bit more. Uh, let me generate some of it here. Yeah. Oh, another thing I really like about this map is instead of just giving you the wool for the area, right? And spawning in random locations. You have dyes that you collect throughout the area. 
they can occasionally spawn on mobs, but they can also typically spawn in chests. So the way you complete the area is by exploring it, you know, to a certain extent. Usually, once you explore like a third or half of the area, you have access to uh, the wool block for it. Um, so I think that was a really cool concept. But yeah, this area was definitely fun with the whole TNT exploding thing. Uh, there were a lot of fun moments where we just exploded everything. Uh, definitely cool area gimmick. Um, Although it was a little bit chaotic to explore, so I guess the most fun I had in this area was just blowing everything up. I think that's pretty much it for this area. Definitely cool. Uh, Definitely interesting looking as well. I forgot to... I guess after that area, which is back here in this area, one of the cool concepts in this map as well is that you basically go to new areas you get a block in order to light up a portal in a previous area. Um, so for instance, here, there's a couple of portals. Where are they at? And these will take you to different dimensions, essentially. Uh, all right, where's the entrance? Come over here, basically you just go this way. Right, yes, right here. Uh, and we get to this section right here. So this is a lava, the lava area. Um, now, of course, one of the big problems is just that with the way Minecraft works, some mechanics just don't play out too well, such as the fireballs these guys shoot. They're a little bit like laggy with their visuals, uh, just because you can't really shoot fireballs correctly. I guess this one's weird because it's suspended in the air. Uh, this area was a little bit difficult, but the lava wasn't too much of a threat because you're provided with fire resistance potions as well as leggings that will give you fire resistance if you jumped in. There's of course striders here too, which are a little bit fun. It's an achievement for walking around this area with them. Uh, I think it was a bit difficult to obtain the fungus on a stick for this quest. If I'm being honest, I wish that there was some way to get it before this area. But it was fun. The only problem was that there's there's no there was no strider safari. You should include a resource pack with Strider Safari, man. You should include a resource pack that automatically plays the song whenever you get onto a Strider. We all know this. This is common sense in CTM map making. Shame on you. The other achievement in this area was a little bit difficult to obtain, which was kill the TNT dudes before their TNT goes off, which basically means you need a one to kill them, which you're really not able to do until much later in the game. <laughs> but besides that, this area was a little bit fun. Oh, some of those other achievements, too, it's just hard to get the stuff to spawn. There was one achievement where we needed to kill a gas while riding a thing, and spawning that gas just took forever, and that was miserable. Alright. So, that's that area. I'm trying to go at a decent pace here, because I do have lunch cooking. Um, next area, we have a set of four areas in this brook section. Um, what I am kind of concerned about is, at least with the travel, it, it got longer and longer to get to the areas just because you have to hop through all these different portals. I didn't feel like it was too confusing knowing where to go, but if you got unlucky with the portal spawns, I feel like things could be problematic, if that makes sense. So I don't know if there's a rule in place to ensure that the portal in the brick area spawns decently close, but I'd hope that would be the case. So next up we have this intersection. There's a really cool trade over here that gives some actually useful trades. Um, unlike some maps where you just kind of ignore the traders. There is a art gallery right here, which I think was a really cool concept. Just encourage people to recreate these little structures that you find in the various areas for a small reward. This area was massive. Uh, this wooden one it had a lot of really unique sections. It looks like we never even fully explored it. Holy smokes, we left out like a bunch of huge sections over here. I guess we never explored off this tree biome over here. Man, yeah, holy smokes, we missed out on a lot. Oh, this one's blocked off. That's weird. Oh, no, it isn't. We can get in from here. All right, well, anyways. So this area was, I feel, a little bit too big. Like, you can see right here... This is three-ish times the size of Area 1, um, which is kind of okay for these bigger rooms because, you know, they can have unique features in them and whatnot. Maybe if I were to make this again, I would maybe make the big rooms a little bit smaller and just include less structures overall. 
it was very difficult to explore at times because you can go up or down various levels and then kind of explore various offshoots. Uh, so I did feel like this area was maybe a, a little bit too big. Otherwise, it was pretty fun. The bees were a, a little bit obnoxious, but that's okay to have a few mobs like that once in a while. The achievements in this area were generally fun besides the uh, flower one, which would have been fun if it weren't for needing a stinking wither rose, which just doesn't seem to spawn in this area. Or if it does, it's pretty rare. I think Zone Reset is pretty rare here. But I did enjoy seeing all the different big rooms. Uh, there's definitely quite a bit of variety in them. And I like that. I definitely enjoyed that. And it seems like most of them were different too, which is really cool. I'm not sure if there's a rule in the map generation to ensure that each of these big rooms is different, but if there is, that, that, that was spot on. I really like that. So, definitely cool. Next area, I'm trying to remember, I think it was a sand area. Now, this one was kind of funny, because you had this sand section right here above that you would complete. And then you'd find this secret, which you'd dig down, and then you'd get to the real meat and bones of this area, which was the red sandstone brick section which i think was really cool by the way that's a cool concept to kind of have this first miniature area then you find a little secret and you get to the actual temple the actual meat and potatoes which is was a lot of fun um so this area was actually really 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 fun to explore in my opinion i supremely enjoyed it oh i didn't even notice that you could get out of this room um some of the achievements here were a little bit tricky but overall a lot of fun exploring really fun mobs just a solid area although you have to remember that i'm a sucker for sand <laughs> i really like my sand areas maybe that's a little bit of bias peeking in but I, I did enjoy the generation on this the exploration aspect the mobs everything was pretty pretty spot on i liked those mobs that would like switch armors and depending on which armor you killed the state you killed them at would determine what loot table they dropped i think that is so stinking cool i love that that's amazing such a cool concept oh amazing so of course uh, one of the the issues with this map is that and it's just kind of inherent to the way the map works is that because of the random generation you kind of sacrifice some of the more unique elements of making a ctm area so you can't have massive vistas or really unique concepts with your area just because you have to account for the fact that they're randomly generated um, so that is just you know one unfortunate aspect of this map but the unique random generation is novel enough to kind of carry it through all right next area uh which one was it this this one this uh, soul sand area so this one was pretty big as well i would almost venture to say it was a little bit too long but it was a lot of fun with the soul speed because you end up just zooming through this area i'm very glad that we were provided with soul speed that was a good choice the other thing i really liked about this area is that when you destroyed a chest inside of these chambers they block off i guess there are some unique concepts in this map so maybe i'm not completely right in that regard and they would spawn a bunch of, you know, really tough mods for you to beat. That's pretty fun. And this was a very good area overall. Albeit a little bit tricky to explore just because of the, inter the paths intersected in weird ways. Uh, and you ended up having to do a lot of backtracking just to make sure that you cleared out everything properly. So besides that, this was quite a blast to play through. I, I, I enjoy this one fondly. And then last but not least for areas over here, we have the end area. Now this one was really interesting because there it is very big and that there's a lot of paths going everywhere. But due to the random generation of these paths, you know, you can kind of see from one path to the other, it doesn't feel as it doesn't feel that long. And it doesn't take that long to explore, even though it has a lot of generating components in it. Because you'd look at this area and say, this is pretty big. But it actually doesn't feel that big, which is one of my favorite aspects of this area, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it looks like we've never fully explored it, but that's fine. I can have, actually, we have a huge section over here we never explored. Um, but yeah, this area was pretty fun in that regard. So, 
pretty interesting exploration. Uh, the blazes were a little bit eh. Blazes are just a tricky mob to make work well, I feel. The skeletons with the bouncy arrows were a lot of fun. That was a cool concept, and I really enjoyed using those arrows. There's a bunch of custom arrows in this map that you can obtain, and some of them are really bad. Like, I really didn't like the shock arrows. Um, the fang ones were okay, they were good, uh, but the bouncy arrows, those were by far my favorite type of arrow. So, massive shout out to you, Zongri, for that. I would honestly, I think it would be cool if you even had a data pack with a bunch of custom arrows. I think there's some out there like that should reach out to those people, apply your, your genius uh, custom arrows. There's a few sub areas within all of these that we need to talk about real quick here. I'm trying to remember which where the one is inside of this tree area. I believe it's over here. Here we go. So we come in here. Oh, this one was interesting. So this is a giant, I guess, piglin castle, where there's a story of there's various factions that are kind of fighting against each other. You know, you've got your blue, your pink, and your red, which I think is pretty charming. You got this whole under, you know, there's actually several different generations here. First, there's the main cave bit. Then you've got the actual structures themselves, and then you've got a whole secret area under here which is actually a whole lot bigger than I thought it was. Holy smokes, that's huge. Not sure what all this is under here, though. That's kind of weird, actually. I don't know what that's about. Mm. Either way, uh, my main criticism of this area are the Hoglins. Hoglins aren't a good mob. They're really not, unless you reprogram them with custom AI, they're really just a bad mob in general, in my opinion. Um, because we would have a lot of spawners for hoglins in this castle portion and they would just constantly hit you and it was just no fun there was one time where i was stuck inside uh a tower over here and i was just constantly killing piglet hoglins and i couldn't get up just because there were so many there were some interesting traders in here as well which i really liked i'm not sure if i can find them but one of them was a gambler so he would basically give you a shulker box full of gold for a small chance we gave them some gold so it was pretty much just gambling and there was other traders in here that just provide you with random drops when you give them gold so that was a very good use of uh i guess your gold so you stockpile a lot of gold and you could come here and you could use it up very cool mechanic very good um, so yeah main criticism hoglins definitely enjoyed the trading as well as the castle itself piglins were also a good mob now down here was definitely the coolest bit I feel like it might not have been the most intuitive to come down here, and I don't know if there were a lot of entrances. Yeah, it looks like there... Actually, no, there is another one over here. So maybe we just got unlucky and only found one. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we just got unlucky and only found one. And, oh wow, there's a secret over here? I don't like all these secret chests. I love how... Oh, whoops. Even despite the fact that a lot of these uh, areas are pre-generated, there's still room for various secrets, such as here in the wall right here. I love that. I think that's really cool. Is there another secret in here? Man, there's so many secrets in this area. I love it. Uh, down here was definitely my favorite portion of the map. Uh, if you go low enough, you end up getting, like, blindness, so the exploration is a little bit spoopy, which is kind of fun. Um, there's even some sections in here where there's basically some uh, gilded blackstone that you mine under, and you find various secret chests, so this was my favorite section, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it's the whole map, but this is one of my favorite sections, even with the fire. You know, fire's not always that fun, but... This was a good session. It wasn't like you were playing spam or anything like that. So, good job, Zungri. Definitely a fun area. We we certainly did not fully explore it, but that's all right. <laughs> oh boy. So next one, next one, next area. I believe you go into. There's one in here. Is there? No. Sections. Is there another area? 
should probably check my advancements here real quick just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, Hellion Heights we went to, this one. Infernal Industries is the final area. The Wicked Knight. Endstone Portal. This is the Blackstone Portal. Yeah, okay, I think that's it. So next we go to this final area here. Which, again, has an absurdly useful trader. Very good job with that. Including a trade for some of the various materials to finish some of the quests. Uh, I, this Okay, which area did we, did we go to first here? I'm trying to remember. I think this one was the first area in this section. Uh, honestly, this was one of the weaker areas in the map for me. I know that Zungri, really, you really like this area. But just the whole levitation mechanic was obnoxious. I feel uh, the constant firing of the crossbows of the piglins was very obnoxious. If you could have limited that sound in some way, that would have been good. Um, it's just too chaotic for me. Now, it was miserable, if that makes sense. So it wasn't like a bad area. Um, so it's not like the map would have been better without it. <laughs> but it's not necessarily worse without it either <laughs> so it's definitely a strange area but basically there's some various mobs in here there's uh uh war pigs that constantly fire their crossbows at you which are kind of fun then there's and if you give them levitation they basically stop firing which is a very interesting mechanic which favored me because of my armor um there were phantoms which i don't like phantoms but they weren't super obnoxious here because they don't have a lot of open space to harass you in um, and there's just some other basic mobs here, too. Alright, the next area that we went through is this nether one. And, ooh, there's some secrets here that we missed as well. What do you know? This one's the first area where you get access to netherite, which is pretty fun. This area was very barren for us. Uh, I don't know if there was a problem with the generation or what, but there were very, very, very few spawners. Um, and exploring was alright, but there just wasn't a lot of content there wasn't a lot to do i feel like it looks like there was a lot more up top that we missed uh however just going through this area did feel kind of like a chore because there just wasn't much going on which is kind of depressing um there's two main sections there's a down section over here which we pretty much fully explored that had a lot of another debris and there are the castle sections here with spawners loot and other various content it looks like we didn't see a lot of rooms like this, so yeah, it really just was. This Everything spawned too high up without too many ways to get up. Uh, plus, there weren't just as many spawners or challenging content as we would like. Alright, so through this area, you also get access to another really neat area. If I can find the portal, here we go. Which is this other jungly area and this one was all was actually really fun to explore um this was one of my favorites as well actually <laughs> there's a unique challenge here where uh you have to feed some parrots i think i talked about it earlier where it took me way too many times to actually get them to capitulate um to get tamed but there was a lot of fun in this area there's like this whole underwater portion which i felt was really maybe not that great um, because what ended up happening was we couldn't find many of the chests, and there was a challenge to find a chest underwater, and there just were only like three or so that spawned, at least the ones we could find. Um, so it would have been nice if we were provided some more water breathing. We were given one water breathing potion at the start, so that didn't last us very long at all. Um, so I feel like I, I would have enjoyed exploring under here. Maybe if we had some water breathing, maybe if we had a riptide trident, um, that would have made the experience a whole lot better. But besides that, uh, this upper area was a lot of fun. There were a lot of unique mobs here, a lot of really, really cool different illager types to fend off and fight. There were some cave spiders, which are obviously quite terrifying. <laughs> I feel like this is where we changed the map to hard, because for some reason it had been uneasy for some of our playthrough, which is kind of disappointing. Um, 
but yeah, really, really fun area, mostly just due to the mobs, honestly. Uh, the exploration was pretty basic, which I also enjoyed, because you just go through it, you conquer it. Uh, these little sections in here, these rooms were also a blast, I really enjoyed them. Then you had the occasional uh, unique structure, such as there was a pyramid, right down here. This was a lot of fun, just stuff like that. So, good area, a lot of fun. A lot of unique situations. Wish the water section was done a little bit differently, but besides that, this was a good area. Now, I just need to find the portal to get back. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. I'm being by the boom. Up next, we have this area, which is, I think, second to the finale, is one of the final areas of the map. It's had a couple of killer bunnies in it, which we had to kill in order to get the raw rabbit. Uh, one of the cool things is there were potion spawners up here. It's, I say cool, it's kind of a mixed bag. Because with potions, they do a lot of damage. There's just... Minecraft inherently, potions are upsetting because the radius is too big. If potions were had like a slightly smaller radius, they would be really, really handy to make these different spawner traps with. But the way it is right now... Just to destroy the spawn, you're going to end up having to get hit by a bunch of potions. And so you need good armor in order to defend against that, or else you're in trouble. Uh, but regardless, it still was fun, you know, having to deal with that. Um, and at this point in the map, you know, we were pretty powerful regardless. So it was definitely a fun section. I felt like this, sec this section was a little bit too maze-like, but it's probably just, once again, us getting unfortunate with the generation. Um... We ended up searching for like 10, 20 minutes to get back to the start over here. We just kept going in circles and circles and circles and just missing it by a little bit. Um, the portal ended up being like right here. So it was actually right next to the start, but we would always have so much trouble. We ended up going up and around and searching for it all over the place. We couldn't find it. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of content here for sure. And then apparently it looks like there was a whole section down here as well that we missed. Um, and there was a whole lot more to explore. I think Dom came down here briefly. But I was always confused as to what was down here. But it looks like there is just a whole other section, which is kind of fun. Yeah, so that's good. It's always good to have more content there if, if, if players accidentally miss out on something. So definitely neat. Um, oh, I did mention in my stream that the generation on this walls for the... Uh, the dark prismarine looks so cool i love this so much it's so neat i love it it looks so cool and the neat part is, is that this is all done with the data pack so this isn't done using a brush this is actually done using a data pack which is so cool all right so i love that all right it's so cool um props to you props to you zungri that's definitely i know it's kind of small um but I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, where do we go to from here? Um, I guess we go on to this section here. Oh, now this this is, I think, yeah, this is the final area, barring the secret final area, which is more of just like a, a mini gauntlet boss thing. I definitely like how big this area is. Now, normally in the past, you know, I've criticized some areas for being too big, but this is the final area. Um, and so its scope, you know, you don't really don't feel obligated to complete it all the way. Rather, just achieve all the achievements and grab any resources that you can along the way. Um, one of the funnest aspects of this area is that after you cleared a decent bit, you got access to elytras and then you could just literally fly around the area which was the coolest thing ever that was a blast get it blast because fireworks <laughs> um i didn't get to explore this nether fortress bit dom said it was a little bit barren for him so i'm gonna go off what he said and say maybe maybe this place could have used a little bit more uh, love but the rest of these sections are pretty cool um there were these long pathways, which maybe were a bit long, a bit too long. There were all these big structures, which were fun. Uh, some of them were a little bit difficult to explore, in my opinion, just because there would be different ways up, and those ways up would, wouldn't lead to a fully interconnected floor. 
the floor would be sectioned off and different ways up would lead to different sections of that floor. I do not like that most of the time. It's okay sometimes, it's okay sometimes, but with the, the way this is randomly generated, it makes it very difficult to know if you fully explored one of these structures or not. Because as you can see, it branches out quite a bit. And then you're like, oh, which floor did I go off which path on? They all look exactly the same. So it's difficult to know, you know, have I explored this section or not. Uh, besides that, it was a lot of fun. I definitely like the netherite scraps in the wall. Give you something extra to kind of go for. A good number of spawners. There were some very fun challenges in here. I remember coming down here and start clearing this bit out. That was a lot of fun. There were also some massive magma cubes that kind of spawned, and they uh, they were a lot of fun to deal with. I wish there were more of those, those massive magma cubes. Um, what else is there? You could ride the striders around, and there were quite a few quests for that, including killing a gas on a strider, which was really hard to get, just because spawning the gas was kind of miserable. Um, besides that, no, this was a lot of fun. Um, and we also found these caches up here, which was really interesting. Uh, so much stuff in these caches. So many barrels. It's like, how do you even begin to, I guess, grab all the loot in there? You can't. That's, that's the answer. You can't. You simply can't. Oh, boy. Um, the drills were also pretty cool. So basically what would happen is you'd come up to these drills, and you place iron blocks in them, and they drill through whatever structure was below them and so that you could take advantage of that to easily clear these places out because most of the spawners would be destroyed and there'd be a lot of exposed uh, netherite scraps which you could uh, then subsequently mine. It's interesting how some of these buildings like these ones were completely barren and then buildings like these were just full of mobs. That is a nice variety. So yeah definitely a really really neat looking area a uh, very fun to play through area, especially once you get the elytra, because you can just fly around and have a blast. Uh, very, very well done. Uh, good job. Good job on this one, Zachary. All right. Now we come back here. So after you do all of this, you can head back to the monument. back to the monument and a secret final area opens up I can't remember where the portal is yeah actually I have no idea where the portal is to the secret final area uh, it's not here is it oh it is here okay so basically this is the secret final area um, and this one was a lot of fun. So there were just chests with a lot of really overpowered, fun gear. So it didn't matter really if you died all that much because you could come back. There were just complete tons of resources up here as well. It's just like complete troll with netherite blocks and everything. It's so funny. Uh, yeah, and this tower, I think it got destroyed quite a bit because <laughs> it blows up afterwards. But this was decently fun it was pretty challenging i feel like maybe a bit too challenging um for a final no i think it was good no I, i'm gonna take that back i think this was a good final kind of send off for the map basically there would be uh crying obsidian in each of these obsidian cubes and you destroy all of them to destroy the tower and then you basically get the secret achievement you win the map so it was a lot of fun nice little final gauntlet here but with a lot of really, really challenging mobs. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely pretty difficult over there. I think those are pretty much all my thoughts on the map. Very good work, Zongri. Uh, honestly, looking through it, there's, um, there's actually not that many criticisms. There's just some issues with achievements. Some of the areas could have been a little bit better. Um, I guess the things that stand out the most about the map would be the custom upgrade system. Really, really love that. Uh, as well as, I guess, the random generation, just because that was a whole lot of fun. The achievement system was also pretty unique. Uh, granted, some of them were just a little bit tricky. But, no, thank you. Thank you for making this map, Zungry. It was a lot of fun to play through. I hope that you continue to make maps. I hope that you continue to make projects. 
Uh, you've had a very large impact on the CTMC as a whole, so I hope that you'll continue to do productive work. Uh, until next time, don't forget to contribute and make the most of your day, guys.